In this video, I'm gonna be giving you my crash course into feeder fishing. So without a doubt, recently, I think feeder fishing has risen in popularity again, probably largely down to now there is specialized feeder only matches, big money finals, you can only fish like the traditional feeder. That I think helped raise popularity, but then also thinking about it, it's the way that loads of us got into fishing, like float fishing and feeder fishing for me was how I got into this sport. And I felt like it definitely died off, but it's perhaps coming back again. And now is the perfect time to do a crash course in feeder fishing. So we're going to go over baits and rigs and, uh, and loads of things later on. But we haven't actually started the session yet. So we're at Hinderclay today. I know this lake pretty well. Uh, we're going to be fishing relatively close to an island, but I'm not going to go right close to it because it gives me an area to back off to. Again, I'm going to talk to you about more, but what I want to do is I want to kick the session off. So we're just going to be fishing a normal cage feeder. And because I know here they do like a little bit of bait, it's still pretty cold. When we're filming this, is the very end of fe uh, February. But what I'm going to do is so I'm clipped up just off the edge of that island. I'm going to put in probably three cages of bait just to kick the session off and I'm not going to be worried, so there's one in, and I'm going to empty it straight away on the surface. Now, this is probably the first bit of technical information I'm going to give you of why I'm doing that. So normally what, what you found and what I used to do when I was young is I'd cast into that clip and I'd wait for my feed to hit the bottom. I'd then empty it once it hit the bottom. And that's great, but that leaves a little pile of bait like, I don't know, maybe, maybe in the size of there, it leaves a little pile of bait. When you hit the clip, hits the water and you pull it straight away you're emptying that feeder on the surface and it's creating a little bit of a bigger bed of bait which means you've now got a slightly bigger area for the fish to feed in and I just like it this time of year just to give them and keep them moving searching for that bait so there we go hit the clip again empty it straight away two quick jerks and you've now probably got I don't know two to three foot area where those fish are going to be sitting. I'm going to do one more of those. I mean, when you look at the size of this feeder, you can see it's not very big. I'm not putting loads of bait in. And like I said, I'll tell you more about what we're putting out there at the moment. But this is just about how I'm kicking the session off. If I was unaware of the venue, I probably wouldn't do this. I would probably just fish the feeder for a couple of casts and fill my way in. But I'm pretty confident that even though it's cold, they're going to react to a bit of bait. So that's all I'm going to do to kick it off. Let's wind this back in. Now, the beauty about this rig is all quick change. And like I said, we're going to go back into the rig in much more detail in a moment. But all I need to do is clip on my hook link and we are now ready to fish. We're on the same clip. Everything's all nicely prepared. I'm going to start with a little six mil pellet. So that's going to go in the band. And then we're just going to repeat what we've just done, basically, but we're not going to empty that feeder this time. So you've got a little bit of a spread that we've just created. Now, hopefully, this feeder is going to go down in the middle of that, and you're going to leave it there, creating a tighter pile of feed right where you want the fish. That's hit the clip, lovely. Take your time when you're sinking line. So that's the next step. Once you're fishing where you are, like I said, you know that you can't go any further in distance because you're on the line clip and you know that you've picked a far bank marker, which for me is actually just off the end of this island. But if you weren't fishing to an island, pick a large tree or something like that and make sure that you are in the same spot every time. Accuracy is so key in feeder fishing and the better you get at it, trust me, the more fish you're going to catch. But don't rush when you are sinking your line because moving that feeder is a big no. You want it to stay where you've put it, where you've got that bait. And that is now 
sunk lovely and that's just going to be popped on the rest and we are fishing so i'm going to give this five or ten minutes for the first cast let's just see what happens see if we get any indication there's some fish there and then we can go more detail and the baits we're using the rigs we're using and lots of like how regularly we're casting and stuff like that but i just want to see what that's going to do after a little bit of bait's gone out there hopefully there's going to be a few fish about today So that has been out there 10 minutes now. I'm going to have a recast, but I guess this is where you could say the fun starts because no matter how many videos you watch or anything like that, every session is different. And it's now down to you as the angler to work out what is going on. So I didn't have any indications there whatsoever. Now, like I said, it is cold. We just avoided a frost this morning. So I'm not expecting it to be hectic, but there's things to start thinking about. So I just load the feeder up again. So what to think about is, first of all, are we in the right area? Now, you can't decide that after one cast, clearly, but you can start to think, do I need to go closer to the island? Do I need to come further away? So my initial thought would be that I don't need to go further away because I've started about, that's probably three foot off the island. If there was fish closer to me, I'd probably be getting some sort of indications on my tip. Now, I didn't get anything there. so. Potentially, they might be a little bit closer, or they could be, you know, they could be around the other side of the island. They could be at a completely different point. So now is a time where you have to work it out. And I'm going to try and do that now. Like I said, I've already mentioned, very, very important to have a clock because one, you will find that quite often a pattern develops. You can find that all of your bites are coming after three or four minutes. I don't know why that is. Sometimes maybe that they're scaring off when the feed is going in or they're just doing little circuits of the lake and it's taken them that long to come back around to your bait. I don't think we'll ever fully know the answer, but patterns definitely emerge. So a clock is mega for that purpose. And also, like I said, sometimes when you're sitting here, it's cold and your hands are cold, you feel that must have been 10 minutes and it hasn't, it's only been like three because time does feel slow sometimes. So that's the reasons for the clock. And again, you're gonna have to work out how quick you think you're gonna have to cast. If, you, if you're getting lots of bites indication, you're gonna need more bait, more regularity. If you're just trying to pick fish off, you might have to drop that back. But that's the sort of thing that will develop as the session going on. But for now, all I'm gonna do is five to 10 minute casts. I'm gonna, I'll definitely fish this area for 45 minutes to an hour maybe, because I think it's a good area. I've caught from there before this time of year, and I'm sure it's just a case of building the swim up, getting some interest going, and it won't be too long, fingers crossed, until we can actually show you one of these hinder clay carp, hopefully, but there's plenty of skimmers in here as well, so, but we really want to catch some carp today. And there we go, first fish on. I'm not entirely convinced what it is. There's quite a few bream in here, but it's not really kicking off like it's a carp, but it is, I don't know, there's a fair bit of weight to it, so it could be, it could just be a, a cold carp like me. I'm feeling the cold there. That wind is blowing down my neck and potentially, I don't know, I'm not sure yet, but it's a fish anyway. It took about, so we've been fishing about 25 minutes. I've probably had, I don't know if I had three or four casts, but just kept ticking away, keeping bait going in, in that same area. And I just started to get a few indications on the tip. So you just kind of feel that there was fish there ready to be caught. And it's proven to be the case. It's, this has got to be a carp, it's fighting well. So it's a good start anyway, it's nice to, actually put a bend in the rod and like I said it's the best thing about it is you feel like you work it out you know you're looking for bites are they, do you need to go closer is it a case of just regular casts that one has been out there 
That was actually six minutes, that car. So now you start to log, like next time it gets to six minutes, if you get another similar bite, then, oh, then you might be thinking that's how long you have to leave the casts. So it's worth painting a picture in your head of what you think's going on. But there we go. That is a good start, a common to start. And he's absolutely freezing. As soon as I just put my hand on there, freezing cold. But there we go. What a lovely fish to start with. Absolutely immaculate block of ice in my hands, but a great start. And now a building block. You know, you start to feel confident. You start to feel like the area is working. You know you're in the right spot. And it's now just a case of how do you catch them quicker so what i'll do is i'll get this one slipped back and then we'll have a little look at the hardware and the rig itself that i'm using for this feeder session so let's get out there again and see if we can repeat that but before i do i just want to talk you through the hardware and the rig that i'm using for a session like this now because this is a crash course in feeder fishing this is basically a very generic way of fishing. Feeder fishing can get very complex, certainly at the higher level, international level. There is hundreds of different variations of things you can do, talking about rods, reel, line, feeder, feeder styles, everything like that. But as a general rule, for something like this, a relatively decent cast, I've got the Advanta Pro Power Feeder in a 12 foot, 12 foot is just allowing me to cast that there nicely. If it was a shorter cast on, I'd probably use a 10 foot. I coupled up with a 4,000 reel. Again, that's just a nice size for feeder fishing. 4,000 is a very good feeder fishing reel. I've got six pound mainline, and then we come on to the rig. Now, as I said, talking about the rig, there's a lot of different feeder rigs out there, and as you get more into it and you want to develop your feeder fishing skills, you probably will want to have a few different rigs in your armory. But if you are just wanting one that's going to work most situations on most commercials, then this is the one that I would go for. It's a helicopter style rig. And the reason why I set it up like this is because this rig pretty much never tangles. That's one thing you want to be sure that you're fishing nice and comfortable and confident that it's not tangled. And if you start getting worries in your head, that, oh, did that go in right? Trust me, it's not a nice place to be. So you can be confident this won't tangle it. And the best thing as well, it's not easy, or it's not hard, sorry, to set up. So first of all, you slide a float rubber onto your main line. Now that is a very, very loose float rubber. It slides up and down seriously easy. So if you were to have a mishap and you did somehow manage to break off, that would just pull out of there with minimal tension and the fish wouldn't be dragging the feeder around. That then comes down to a quick change swivel. This is quick change because I can clip my hook link on and off. So if I want to change hook length lengths or different hook baits, different size hook, that can be done in about a second. And then you put another bead, which ties to a quick change swivel, which is what I attach my feeder to. Again, quick change swivel means I can change my feeder. Maybe I need to go heavier because it gets windy or I want to just change the style to how I'm fishing. It's all nicely interchangeable. And while I'm on the subject of feeders, like I said, you this is something you probably would get more serious with as you, you got into your fishing. But there's loads of variation. There's maggot feeders, there's window feeders. These are ridiculously popular now. They're actually a mega feeder. They're a bit more of a, a cage. You can put loads and loads of bait inside these and you can just block off a bit of ground bait and they're really, really good, weighted at the front, so they cast like a dream. There's cage feeders, there's mesh feeders, there's so many different options, but the one that I'm just using, because it's quite shallow, is I've got a 30 gram wire cage feeder. Now this is again is what I'm saying, if you, if you do get more into it, and you wanna home your skills more, you will need to adapt your fishing situation. You know, I wouldn't be using this feeder in really deep water if I wanted to get the bait really quickly to the bottom because it does come out in the mesh cage easier than it would say a window feeder or something like that. So have a few different variations, a few different weights, a few different sizes. Like I said in the summer you're probably going to want to put a bit more bait out as well. So you, you might want a bigger feeder like in the winter you may want an absolute tiny feeder. There's so many things that you can learn 
and just the best thing about it is you can just never ever ever know it all so every time you go you're learning more and more and that's just making you a better angler and that's all you can really ask for isn't it if you catch a few more fish that's even better but the setup that i've got there that i've shown you that's very very generic and you know like i said i would happily take that to pretty much any commercial in the country and feel pretty confident that you know that that's working as it should be or as good as it can be and yeah i wouldn't be worried about the rig tangling or anything being wrong so there we go that's the rig and the hardware like i said if you do get more specialists you are going to have to have a few different options but don't complicate it too much stick with what you know and then it's more about how you're fishing it like i said it's very very important what i've done there take your time to sink your line keep casting in that same spot find where the fish are you know i was probably only going to give that another half an hour another 20 minutes before i might go to that side of the island or try and open water but like i said we started to get a few indications it felt like that there was a few fish just coming in on that bait that's why i put those feeders out at the start because like i said i know this venue and they do like a little bit of bait even when it's cold so six minutes was that bite i'm now gonna perhaps have a few minutes a few casts sorry around the five or six minute mark see if there's any pattern develops and uh yeah read the session from there but i think i'm pretty confident that there's one fish there they're not normally on their own i think that could swing around at any minute and we could have another one had a little flurry of bream and I think as well this is another one well bream slash skimmers they're sort of big skimmers small bream whatever you like to call them but I don't mind that you know it keeps you busy there's another one and it, it keeps interest into the swim and everyone knows that carp are greedy they will happily coming in there up some skimmers that are feeding so like i said they're all welcome for me but i can tell you one thing i've seriously underestimated the weather today <laughs> i am freezing sitting here mostly because the wind's picked up and it is icy cold the wind but yeah there we go we've had a little a little spell of those and i'm certainly not going to worry about that so let's get this one slipped back and then we are going to talk to you about the bait and additives. Let's have a chat about baits then. But before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire this out there again. Because while I'm talking to you, there's every chance that a fish could pick it up. Like I said, there's a few skimmers and that out there. I'm just, so far we've used six mil pellet, but... You could use, you know, you could use whatever you wanted to really with with bait. Well, it's literally the world is your imagination. That's all you're limited by. And th that's the best thing about feeder fishing. I'm just concentrate on putting this out. What feeder fishing does do is it gives you the option to fish lots of different baits, more so than the method feeder. So the method feeder, you are quite limited to 
pretty much ground bait or pellets. You know, they're the two baits that stay on with the feeder. But with an open-ended feeder and fishing ground bait, you can actually fish whatever you want. I mean, limitations, obviously, your own imagination and cost comes into it because, you know, let's face it, baits like worms and stuff like that, they're very expensive, but also very, very good. But it does allow you to fish for lots of different species. You know, I've, I've caught some skimmers today and that carp, but, you know, you could fish a maggot feeder for roach, you could fish some chop worm for, if you really want to tug the skimmers or perch. It's such a versatile way of fishing. And that's one thing that the, the feeder does allow you to do. But let's talk about the ground bait itself, because this is the main important thing. Now, this is, like I said, a crash course in feeder fishing. So you can get really technical with it. And you may have heard people say before, I over wetted my, my mix or I have my dry ground bait dry and stuff like that. But perhaps there's a, a video for an advanced feeder fishing. This is more, just like I said, a crash course. So the ground bait that I've got here is the new feeder mix from Dynamite. This is in the F1 suite. It smells absolutely amazing. It smells like a marzipan smell. And that's my favorite for the winter. There's a betaine green. That sort of comes into my play when I'm really just targeting carp perhaps in the spring. And then they do a krill in the summer. That is wicked. And I'll switch over to the krill ground bait. But how we mix it up, nice and simple. Just slowly add water to the dry ground bait and then you mix it together really vigorously, trying to spread that water evenly until you get to a point where you can nip the ground bait in your hand and it stays together nicely. And I would then leave that for about 10 to 15 minutes because ground bait really draws in water. And then what you want to do is put it through a riddle. Everyone always says, do I really need to put it through a riddle? But you'll notice the ground bait from when you first mix up, it's full of lumps, the ones that have taken extra water. When you put it through a riddle, you end up what I've got here, a lovely fluffy ground bait, no big particles, no lumps. You're not gonna fill the fish up, but you give it a squeeze and it squeezes together absolutely lovely. That's the way that you're gonna be mixing it most of the time, like I said, without trying to go too technical. And then you can use your ground bait as a carrier for other particles. So on my tray here, I've got, got a little tub here of some soaked up two mil pellets. They're in the F1 suite as well. I said it's a wicked flavour. I've got some six mil F1 pellet. That's what we've had on the hook, but you can change that up. I've got some sweet corn. I think everyone loves sweet corn. You can take it anywhere. And of course, certainly this time of year, you can't go anywhere without taking a few maggots. And the one thing that I would want to talk to you is about how you load your feeders. You'll notice in here, I've just got my ground bait in this bowl. But I have a tub, it's empty at the moment, and I call this my workstation because one thing you don't want to do is add all of your particles to your ground bait because you can't then take them out. If you find that you feel like you're feeding too many particles and the fish aren't really responding to it, if it's all in your ground bait, there's nothing you can do about it. So what I do is I just add a couple of handfuls into this, like I said, what well, I call it my workstation almost. So there's my ground bait. And I might think today we've, we'll give them a bit of bait We'll put in a pinch of micros. I might put a very small pinch of six mils and let's say just a few grains of corn. So now I can just go straight in my tub and a feeder I've got just beside me there. You can fill it up and you've got your ground bait in there packed full of just the amount of particles that you want in your little tub. But so if you've done that in the whole bait tub, then you wouldn't be able to take it out. So that's a great way of doing it. And then also, if you don't need to, if you don't need to put particles in, that's why I keep this ground bait separately. You just whip your feeder in there and there you go. You've now got a bait full of ground bait in your cage feed that you can definitely cast more regularly because there's no particles in there. Creates a cloud, creates some interest, and it just makes it nice and versatile. So uh, yeah, hopefully I haven't confused anyone there. I've gone to, a, like I said, there probably is an advanced feeder fishing thing to film as well but think about what you're doing think about how much bait you want to put out what bait you want to put out and you should be getting a few bites now, i haven't really been watching my tip there with too much sort of oh oh i thought it was going to go there <laughs> i haven't been watching it too Ken. but there's another little liner there hopefully it's not going to be too long before something else comes along i'm so certainly there's a few skimmers there now but it would be nice if the big old carp started to have a bit of battle, warm me up a little bit. Let's hope that's what's around the corner.
There we go, another carp seems to have played ball. Definitely more of a skimmer day today. Quite a few more fish and they're very, very willing to feed. This one's coming right down to my edge, but the carp really have proven a little bit trickier than I thought, but it is cold. Well, like I said, I have said it, but we just looked at it and it's three degrees. So with the wind chill, it's probably a little bit colder than that, but certainly a few bites to be had. And like I said, it is a method that it's, it's definitely coming back in popularity, but as I said at the start, has or did dip in popularity because obviously the method feeder really took off and it does dominate sort of commercials like this. But there is a place for the traditional feeder. And like I said, with those big matches now that are available with feeder only matches, whoa, come on, it's definitely worth like trying to hone your feeder skills and keep that ticking over and getting better and better because there is good fishing to be had on it but I think if I get this one in so let's say when I get this one not if I'm going to trust myself when I get this one in we might call it the last one and I'm going to try and get myself warmed up because the information that we've given you is definitely worth taking and playing yourself you know everyone has their own mixes they like everyone has their own feeders they like and there's so there probably is an advanced feeder fishing video out there that we can do at a later date where you can go into more details about different feeders and stuff like that. That's a nice carp to finish on as well. Come on. Still got plenty of energy. I think that they'd just be sitting there not doing a lot, but whoa, he's going for a stage and now. Come on. Yeah, not happy you ruined his day, but He's made our day. <laughs> Popped up right in front of me. There we go. That is what it's all about. That's a nice fish to end on. We did switch around the hook baits a little bit, but back on the pellet to finish with. Let's unhook that and we'll have one to show you check that out that is a wicked carp wouldn't mind catching a few more of them and i dare i say it in the next few months when the weather warms up people are going to be catching a lot more of these but there we go that's the crash course on feeder fishing i said i hope you've enjoyed it take out of it what you can let us know if you are out there giving it a go yourself and of course don't forget to hit that subscribe button drop us a comment and we'll be back very soon with the next match masterclass